Welcome to MathsMaster.org. Let's have a look at doing calculations with mixed numbers and fractions. Mixed number and fraction calculations look like this. As you can see, you can be adding, subtracting, timesing or dividing them. And you may have a mixed number, for example, times by a fraction. Or if you look at the bottom example here, you may actually have two mixed numbers together in the same calculation. So 8 and 2 thirds add 4 and an eighth. Um, what this lesson is about is focusing on how we would go about uh, answering these questions. How would we actually do these calculations? Before you can do calculations with mixed numbers and fractions, you have to be really good at doing two other things. You have to be able to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. You need to be really good at that. And secondly, you need to be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions. Now there's a lot of work there, um, but you've really got to be really good at doing all those four operations on fractions before you move on to learning how to do calculations with mixed numbers and fractions. So make sure that you're okay at those two things before you go on with this lesson. Whilst all these mixed number and fractions questions look different, they're actually all answered using a very, very similar process. It's actually the same each time. It's a two-step process and it relates back to those two things that you've got to be able to do before you can go on and do these calculations. So the first thing you should do when you get a mixed number and fraction calculation, the first thing you should do is convert all of the mixed numbers into improper fractions. So you rewrite the sum out, but rather than the mixed numbers, you convert all of them into improper fractions. The second thing you do, then, is now that you've got uh, the sum written out just in fraction form, you then go on and add, subtract, multiply, divide the fractions as you normally would. So whatever you have to do, if it's an addition sum, you go and add the fractions and so on. Let's have a look at a few examples now to see if we can get the hang of it. So 2 and a tenth, 2 and 1 tenth times by 1 third. The first thing you do is all of the mixed numbers you turn into improper fractions. So 2 and 1 tenth is 21 tenths as an improper fraction. So now we've rewritten the sum out um, just using fractions. And then we go on and multiply these two fractions as we normally would. So multiplying fractions, you do numerator times numerator. 21 times 1 is 21. And you do denominator times denominator. 10 times 3 is 30, so the denominator of the answer is 30. So our answer to this question is 21 thirtieths. And of course, you could go on to simplify that fraction um, if you wanted to. Let's have a look at a division sum now. So we'll do two and a quarter divided by one and five eighths. First step, convert all the mixed numbers into improper fractions. So two and a quarter is nine quarters as an improper fraction. One and five eighths is 13 eighths as an improper fraction. Okay, now we've got to this point, we just do the division sum on the fractions as we're familiar um, with. So to divide fractions, can you remember the rule? You have to take the second fraction and take its reciprocal. That means turn the fraction upside down. So 13 eighths become 8 thirteenths. And we change the divide sign to a times. So now we'll go on and do 9 quarters times 8 thirteenths. 9 times 8 in the numerator gives us 72 for the numerator of our answer. 4 times 13 gives us a denominator of 52 as an answer. So the answer to our original question, 2 and 1 quarter divided by 1 and 5 eighths, is 72 over 52. And naturally you could simplify that 
if you needed to. You could write that fraction in its simplest form, or you could convert the answer to a mixed number if, if that's what the question asked you to do. Here's an example of an addition sum uh, with a mixed number and a proper fraction. Uh, same rule still apply. First step is convert all the mixed numbers to improper fractions. So 1 and 3 fifths becomes 8 fifths. It's an improper fraction, but it's the same size as 1 and 3 fifths. And then we go on and simply add the pairs of fractions as we normally would. So 8 fifths add 7 tenths. Well, we have to make the denominators the same. So the denominator of 8 fifths and 7 tenths, we have to make the denominators the same, and we use equivalent fractions to do that. So I'll change 8 fifths into 16 tenths. 16 tenths is exactly the same size as 8 fifths. Uh, we're just using that because it's now the denominators are the same. 16 tenths add 7 tenths. We can do that nice and easily. That gives us 23 tenths tenths altogether. So that's the answer to our original question. And once again, uh, you could uh, go on and write that as a mixed number if the question asked you to, uh, but that's the answer. Let's finish up with a subtraction. So we'll do three and one tenth, subtract one and two fifths. Uh, first step, exactly the same again, convert all the mixed numbers to improper fractions. So 3 and 1 tenth is the same as 31 tenths, and 1 and 2 fifths is the same as 7 fifths. So now we'll go on and do 31 tenths, subtract 7 fifths. We need to make the denominators the same. I'll do that by using an equivalent fraction uh, to 7 fifths. I'll use 14 tenths, same size as 7 fifths, but it has the benefit that we have now made the denominators the same. And we can go on and do 31 tenths subtract 14 tenths now, which gives us 17 tenths altogether. And naturally, you could go on and convert that to a mixed number if you wanted. That's 1 and 7 tenths, if that's the format that the uh, question asked you, uh, that it wanted the answer in. Uh, but nonetheless, 17 tenths is the answer. That was calculations with mixed numbers and fractions. If you want to see some more great maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.